Hi, welcome to In the Garden with Margie. And today what I'm going to talk about is how do you get a garden going? My biggest message is don't be afraid of it. Even if what you start with dies, you can't go wrong. I've had some failures, but every time I've learned something, which is a good thing. And the easiest way to get started is just find a piece of ground, buy some starter plants, and go for it. If you don't have any ground to plant, or the ground you do have is just awful, then use pots, either on the ground or hanging. My first year here, I tried planting onions and garlic in a strip along the back of the garage. We had to dig up the soil and add treatment and manure to it. Now, because I got a lot of sun, I thought it'd be ideal, but it wasn't. The soil compacted too much, and it was hard to keep it watered enough. Not all experiments are going to work. The other suggestion is to get a good gardening book. I went into Amazon and bought the Vegetable Gardener's Bible by Edward C. Smith. It's been an ideal book. One of the most important aspects of planting a garden has to do with location. It's okay to have a spot that gets some shade, but make sure you also have some full sun too. Vegetables such as tomatoes and corn need full sun. However, I have also grown corn in partial shade. There is something called hardiness zones, which can help you determine when you should plant what and the various temperatures to expect in your particular zone. People also think they need to have a lot of space. This is just so not true, but I can understand why they think so. Now, you can plant your garden in containers, either on the ground, in a small space, or hanging. The basics are the same, regardless of how you grow it. The most fascinating thing that I'd like to try one day is growing a garden in bales of hay. Seriously. Not only is this a great solution when you have very little space, but also when you don't have good soil. But if you don't plan to grow in a bale of hay, your soil will be the second most important aspect of your garden. I'll talk about soil in another video. Many people think that they need to have a lot of time to grow a garden. I hear, oh, because I work full time, I don't have time for a garden. But if you set things up right, it might take you 15 to 20 minutes a day. What do I mean about setting it up right? There are three things that take time in a garden after you've set it up, which are weeding, watering, and harvesting. If you set up some type of watering system with a timer, you don't have to worry about spending all that time watering everything by hand. And that's the time-consuming part. Even if you plant in containers, you can still set up an automatic watering system. Finally, as your garden starts to produce, you do want to spend time picking it. But that's the fun part <laughs> for everybody, actually. Next time, I'm going to share with you more about the actual planning with paper and pencil. But for now, I'll say from In the Garden with Margie, thanks for watching. Share your own tips and questions. Gardening is an ever-learning experience.